All right, so we've already looked at how we go from a mixed radical to an entire radical in a previous video, which I'll link in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like if you like it and a comment on any math that you'd like to see demonstrated on my channel and I'll make some videos for you. Today we're going to go from entire radical to a mixed radical. So an entire radical again is where the number is entirely under the radical to one where it's mixed. So some of the number is on the inside and some of the number is on the outside. And this is typically the way that we deal with radicals is we like to take as much number out of the inside as we can and put it in as a coefficient in the front. All right, so let's go through some of these. There's different ways to do it. Uh, maybe I'll choose a couple of methods. Um, one way is to always look to see if you're good with your perfect squares, okay? So perfect squares um, would be, well, one squared, two squared, three squared, and so on. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and then 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. I'll stop there because when I was in school, at least in elementary school, we had to know our 12 times tables. So know your first 12 perfect squares. So you can ask the question, which is the biggest one of these that goes into 200? And you can see the biggest one is 100. So what I'm going to say here is that's equal to 100 times 2. Okay, there's another way to do it, but we'll do this first. And then recognize that you can actually pull these radicals apart when they're being multiplied like that. So if you have a mother radical, if it's being times, not when you're added, but when they're times, you can pull them apart. And you know what the square root of 100 is, it's 10. And the square root of two is, well, it's the square root of two because you need to get a decimal approximation for that. So we just keep it as root two, and there's a times that binds those numbers together. So this is the final answer here, okay? Now, another method for this would be to simply start breaking down 200. So for here, what I could do is write that as, I don't know, 20 times 10. This method doesn't require that you know all your perfect squares. You just start breaking it down. And then of course, 20 is two times 10 times 10. So 20 is two times 10, 10 is 10. You can stop once you've got a pair. This is square root land. So for every pair on the inside, one gets to leave on the outside, okay? So if I have two tens on the inside, that 10 comes to the outside, the two gets stuck inside. So it becomes 10 root two. You can see the answer is exactly the same. All right, onward and upward. So take a look here. This is an example where we have a variable. So C is a variable. We also have something that isn't a square root. This is the fourth root. So the index over here was two. And if the index isn't indicated, it's automatically considered a two, which is square root, like square ring, the opposite. This is fourth root. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the C to the nine. So I'm gonna put a four here. And now you could write nine C's if you wanted to, but really what you're looking for is grouping them in groups of four. So I know if I had nine C's, I'm gonna use some visualization here. I know that I could have four and then another four. That would give me eight in total there'd still be one C left, do you see? And so for every group of four, one gets reported on the outside. Again, for every group of four, one gets reported on the outside. So let's write the answer. So for C to the four in fourth root land, the answer on the outside is just C. Same again here, for C to the four in fourth root land, you get another C on the outside. Notice that this C here is stuck because in order to leave, you have to have a group of four, okay? So the, the radical stays right here. The C gets stuck and don't forget to write your index, which is four. Also C times C, don't leave it as C times C, write it as C squared. So C to the power of two with a fourth root of C. Now, can you see the confusion possibility here? The two here is an exponent on the C. The four is the index on the radical. So put a bracket around here. So the reader knows that this here is your coefficient 
and the four here is the radical index, okay? All right, so there's a nice fine answer right there. And then this one here has numbers and variables in it. So in this case, I'm actually gonna write out all my y's. So I'm in square root land, and I'm gonna start breaking down 48. Now you can break it down into its primes and look for pairs, or I can look at my perfect squares and say which is the biggest one that goes into 48. And after a little bit of thinking, you'd realize 16 goes into 48. Did you know that 16 times three is 48? It's a good, good thing to memorize. So I've got 16 times three, okay, and that gives me my 48. Um, and then I've got my Y, so five of them, one, two, three, four, and five. So I've got five Y's. Now this is square root land, so I'm looking for pair combinations, do you see? Now for the 16, which by the way is four times four. So for the four times four on the inside, it's one four on the outside. So I'm gonna write four on the outside. I swap the 16 on the inside for a four on the outside. And then I look for my pairs. There are my pair combinations for the Y's. For each pair on the inside, you get one on the outside. So for this pair, I get a Y on the outside. For this pair, I get a Y on the outside. These are all glued together by times. And there's nothing more I can do. So now I've got to build my radical because there's still numbers inside. The three got stuck because it needs a pair and it doesn't have it. And also this singleton Y. So this Y here gets stuck inside. Don't leave a Y times a Y. Y times Y is Y squared. So that's equal to four Y squared square root three Y. And just to make sure the reader doesn't get confused about whether the two is an exponent or an index number, I get to wrap a bracket around the radical and there's a fine final answer. All right, so um, leave a question down below if you have more questions about these questions. I'll certainly answer questions in the comment section. Also leave um, any uh, suggestions for videos that you would like to see on this channel. And um, stay tuned, I've got videos, you can find them down below, um, adding and subtracting radicals, and also multiplying and dividing radicals, especially rationalizing, rationalizing that's a hard word, denominators that have radicals in them. All right, so I'll see you next time uh, right here on this channel. Bye now.